Hello, Krista Woodard here at the Osceola Library. We have some exciting news and that is, is that we switched circulation systems recently. We previously had Destiny by Follett, um, but we have switched to Atrium because we feel Atrium has some features that are gonna be more beneficial for you, our patron, as well as for us, the staff. And so this video is to share um, this new circulation system with you so that you can see all the features that you will have access to now. In order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and bring up a screen so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, in order to access the new system, what you'll want to do is go to our library's website, which is www.osceola.lib.ia.us. It's a long one. Okay, and once you're here, then go ahead and click on the catalog tab. And there it is, our new circulation system. Okay, so over here to the left, we have a box for news and messages. And you can see we have a welcome message, but currently we have no news on here yet. So just keep watching. Um, we'll hopefully have that updated here before long. The next thing is, is the search feature, which you can see here front and center. But you'll notice there's also one over here to the left in the upper left corner. And that one pretty much stays there no matter where you go. Um, we're gonna go ahead for this one. We're gonna use this one in the center and I'm gonna look for an item. Um, we'll start with the book discussion selection for this month, which is Someone Knows by Lisa Scavellini. So I'm gonna type that one in and hit my enter key. And there you go. You can see that it has brought up 74 items. And in case you're wondering why so many, if you scroll through all that were brought back, you can see the Elevation by Stephen King popped up because in the description, it has the word someone and it has the word no. So the main thing is, is that if it is sorted by relevance, which is the default, it should hopefully bring up just what you're looking for if we have it in our system. Okay, and so you can see the first two are the title that I am looking for. And in order to figure out why we have two, if you come over here to the right, you can see this little icon shows you that the top record is an actual book. And then the second record, this icon shows you it is an audio book that you can come into the library and check out. Okay? So there, if I wanted to look at only books that were available for children, which obviously um, the book discussion selection would not be, but for the sake of showing you how to do it, I could come over here to this age group on the left-hand side and click on child, and it will get rid of all of them that were not in designated as children's books. So here we have a list of the few of them that have the words someone and no somewhere in the, either the title or the description, which brought back seven. And so if I wanna go ahead and remove that, Go back over here to age group and click remove child from filter. And now you can see we're back to the original 74 that we had available. You can also filter out by doing audiobook or book, um, the age group, various different things over here. Now, the next thing I want to show you is that if, for instance, you wanted the CD, and I can look over here in the upper left corner of that record, I can see that it is currently checked out. So it is not available. And if I don't wanna wait, what I can do is go up here. You can see the second tab is labeled Overdrive. Overdrive is the name of the company that provides eBooks and audiobooks for, um, through Bridges for our patrons. So if I click on the Overdrive tab, there you go. It'll bring up a list of the books that have the search criteria that I entered in our overdrive system. And so we do have six items over here and the first two are actually the ones I'm looking for. Someone knows by Lisa Scottolini. Um, this one here is the ebook. This top one is the audiobook. And so if I want to go and try to get that audiobook, I can click here to go to audiobook and you can see it brings us right into our bridges system where you can then sign in here and then hopefully borrow the item. But as you can see, that audiobook is also checked out in Bridges, so it's not available now. I could put a hold by clicking here. 
Um, but I just wanted to be able to show you how this links now to our bridges right from our own catalog. I'm going to go ahead and close this tab there. So we're back into our circulation system. Okay. All right. So that is how you can search through our catalog. And there are several ways that we can do that. There was the home page that has that search box that we saw. If I click on search, it has some different options. You can search by Lexile value if this is something that you need for your um, student. Uh, or media, advanced. Over here is a visual tab. This might be good for kids. Or if you're a visual person, person you can click right here for our recent additions. For our new reading materials, we brought back 78 items. So we have some on CD. American Patchwork and Quilting Magazine, Graphic Novel, there you go. And so if I was wanting to look through the new materials, but I was only looking for books, again, I could go over here and filter by clicking on book. And there you go. Those are the new books. Okay. I'm going to go back to our home. So we can start fresh. And the next thing I'm going to show you is to how to get into your patron account on our circulation system. Everybody who has a library card has an account in our atrium system. And I'm going to show you how you can access your account by coming up here to the upper right corner where it says account. And you can see it says not logged on. I'm going to click on the log on button. And it will bring up this box where I need to enter patron barcode number. So the number that's on your patron um, card is the number that you're going to put in here. So I'm going to use the one from our special account. And I'm going to go down to password. Your password is going to be your last name. So you're going to want to enter that, remembering to capitalize the first letter. So there I'm putting it in. Click on log on, and there you go. Now I am currently logged on in our staff special events account. And now we're going to see these different tabs that we have over here. The first one on the left is reserves. And this should show if you have items that are reserved that you're still waiting for or items you've reserved that are now available for pickup. And you can see there are none here. Um, I can go ahead and add one. If I go back to someone knows, so I'm gonna click up here and then hit enter. Now I'm back into our catalog and I'm gonna go to that CD and click on the title. As it says, it is currently checked out. I can go right over here, click on reserve, and then I'm going to click reserve here again. Now it's just wanting to confirm that you want to reserve, and you can see I'll be first in line, so nobody else is waiting ahead of me. I click OK, and the item is reserved successfully. So I'm going to close it, and I'll close this. Now I'm going to get back into my account. And to do that, I'm going to go back up here to accounts where it says my items and click that. Now you can see I have an item that is reserved. What will happen is once that item is checked back in, check back in, then the staff are going to see that you are waiting for that particular book. And so they're going to shelve it for you to come pick up. And then you'll see that item go from the reserve shelf here to the items waiting for pickup up here. Okay, so that's for reserves. The next tab over we have items out. So I will click on that. And you can see, as it says up here, we have 24 items checked out. So in your account from here, you can see a list of all the books that you have checked out. And each one will tell you when the book is due, as you can see right here, October 30th, how many times it's been renewed, which I'm, you can only 
renew from home yourself one time. That should be able to give you, because books check out for three weeks. So if you check it out for three weeks and then at the end of three weeks, you still need it, you check it out or renew it, and then you'll have it another three weeks. So we've determined that at six weeks, if you still think that you need it longer, you'll need to contact the library to go ahead and renew that for you. Okay, so there's my listing. And from here, if I wanted to renew, I can do like all of the books, I can click select all, and then I could click on the renew button, um, which I am not gonna do because these have already been renewed once. So anyway, that's where you can see the items that you have out and, um, and also how you can renew them. Okay, then I'm going to go over here, the next tab, which is fines. Now go there, we have no fines and fees. Fees. If you had any fines, they would be listed here. Okay, next, I'm gonna click on account. And this is where you'll find all sorts of wonderful features. All right, the first thing is, you'll wanna make sure that your address is correct in there. If not, you'll want to notify us to edit that. The next thing, your contact preference. If you have a preference as to how you want to be contacted, so you don't want to be called on your work phone, most definitely, which you probably don't have in your account anyway, but if you prefer to be contacted by email, you can select that. By text, you can select by that, but in order to do that, you have to have your mobile phone in there. So anyway, that is how you can notify, or how you can select your preference for being contacted. What you can also do is set up a reminder email for when your items are due back. This, this is, we can't do this for you. This is one that you'll have to do yourself. You can click remind me by email when my items are due back, okay? And it takes me sometimes a few days to be able to get the email notification and then make a note to myself to get that book and then actually get the book back to the library. So I'm going to say, remind me three days before that due date. So I should get an email three days before the item is due telling me your item will be due back in three days. Okay. And so if I click save, then what will happen is this box will come up to verify your account. All you have to do is re-enter that password, which again is your last name, capitalized with the first letter. And click Submit. And now it will tell you your account information was changed successfully. Okay, so if you wanted to get notification by mobile phone, by cell phone, you're going to want to put your mobile phone number in here. So I'm going to go ahead and enter a local number, which is entirely made up. This is not an actual phone number, but it will be a local prefix. Uh, okay, the next thing you'll have to do is come down here where it says mobile phone text messaging. You're going to have to put in your phone carrier and that prefix is a US cellular. If yours was a Verizon, you'd select that here or a T-Mobile or if you had consumer cellular. So I'm gonna put in US cellular and now you'll notice it has auto-generated a text message address. So we, the system will email your text phone so that you can receive this text notification. Once I have all this in here, then you can go down and click on any of these that you want. Text me when my items are due back. And see, I have an email reminder, but I can also set up a text as well. So um, when life gets really busy and I miss the email, I can also have a text notification so that I'm not incurring fines because my items are overdue. Okay, and the next option, text me when my items have been overdue for three days. Um, I'm not sure why three days is selected. It may be because we no longer have a seven day grace period. Um, now, if you can bring your book back within three days of the due date, you will not be fine. But after three days, you're gonna start paying fines. So that may be why that three days is there. Um, and then there's these other options, text me about new items on my watch list or when a reserve is ready for pickup. So that reserve that we put on the Lisa Scottolini CD, I can click this here. And when that book is checked back in, then the system will automatically text me to let me know the book is available. All right, and I will show you here shortly 
how to set up a watch list as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a text mark in there, text box in there, check mark in there, and then I'm gonna to have to put that password again, last name, and submit, and count information was changed successfully. Okay, so there we have all that. Now the next tab over is interest. And under here, you'll see book bags and watch lists. All right, so I'm gonna click on book bags. Okay, so here we have no current saved book bags. So what I can do is I can create a new one and name it. The book bag is essentially that. It is, it, it's a place where you can store books in our system that you want to be able to reference later. So I'm gonna create a new bag, oops, that says next checkouts. There you go. So that way, if I have, okay, so there's no items in my checkout or my, yeah, my next checkout. Then I can click on the title of the book bag and the name of the book bag there. And it says your book bag is currently empty. Use the search field above to find items to place in your book bag. All right, so this is good for those times when you are interested in a book, but you maybe have like already 10 books checked out if you're anything like me um, and think I, I don't want to check out another book and take it home, but I do want to be able to come back later and check this book out. So this book bag will be my reminder. So let's just say I, I, I want to read Pride and Prejudice. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the title and then hit my enter key. And there we go. Now, notice the first one that popped up, you see by the icon over here, is a DVD. And I'm looking for the book, so I'm gonna scroll down here to the book, and I'm gonna click on the title, and then over here, I'm gonna add it to my book bag. And click OK. All right. So now you can see up here where that book bag is listed next checkouts and it shows that there is one item in there. Now, maybe I also want, um, what else would I want? Well, for lack of trying to remember, I'm, I'm going to put in someone knows and hit enter and click on the title of that one and go over and add it to my book bag and then click OK. So there you go. So now I have two items in my book bag. So anytime I get into my account, I can come over here and click on view for the book bag. And there you see the items that I have. It's like, okay, that's right. I remember I wanted to check out Pride and Prejudice next, so then I can go get it. Now, if for whatever reason I decide, oh, I don't want that book any longer, I can put the check in the box and then come up here and click on remove and now it's removed that book from the title or the bag okay all right so i'm going to go back to my account so click on my items there we go now we're back under the interest tab there's our book bag with its name with this number of items below that you'll see a watch list so if i click on that i have no watch lists i'm going to click on add and so from here, I can create a watch list based on author or a series title. So if I have a favorite author and I want to know the next time that the library has a book that gets cataloged by that author, you can see I've already typed this in once before. I'm going to put in one of my favorite authors, Joel C. Rosenberg, and then click Add. And there you go. Now, whenever the library catalogs a new book by the author, I will get notified in the way that I had selected in my account 
So let's go back to my items and go back to my account. And it was text me about new items on my watch list. So I should receive a text message about that book. All right, so there you go. There's book bags and there are watch lists and how they work. So the next thing is the history tab. All right, if I check out history over the last year. For, so those of you who wonder, um, oh, um, did I ever read that book by Daniel Silva? Or um, what book did I leave off in, in the series that I'm reading? so I can pick up the next book, then I can go ahead and retrieve my checkout history that will show everything for the last year. There we go. There's my list. Now, one thing you're gonna notice here is the date checked out is 9-29-20, and it does not go any farther back than that. Okay, this is because it's a brand new circulation system, and what you had checked out previously under Destiny did not transfer over because there was no history kept in Destiny. So um, unfortunately, while it says that you can get retrieve a history back for a year, there is not a year's worth of data to retrieve. So moving forward, everything that you check out for the next year will be available to you in this history tab, okay? There you go. All right, so the last thing I think that we have to look at is this little suggest button right here. I'm going to click on that. If you're looking for a title or a particular book that somebody has suggested to you and we don't have it in the library, you can go ahead and make a suggestion for us to purchase the book here. By entering the title and the author, you probably don't need to enter or don't know what the ISBN number is, so you do not have to worry about that. If it's a DVD that you're wanting to recommend, you can select DVD any information here and then click the suggest button and then the director will be notified that you have made a suggestion and he can decide whether or not that's something we want to add to the library. Okay, and I said that was the last thing, but I remembered one more thing. Okay, over here, we have different features. First, we have help. I should say last, that's the farthest one over. The next is if you wanna click on Espanol, you can see that it has these in Spanish. It's not gonna have all the content on our site in Spanish, but at least the main things. Not the book information will still be in English, but that will at least make it a little bit easier for Spanish speaking patrons to be able to navigate our site. I'm gonna go ahead and click the back button. And next to that is the mobile. So switch to the mobile site. So if you are on your mobile device, this is what your account will look like. Now I'm going to go back. Okay, the last thing is this cute little face here is our kids viz. So I'm going to click on that. Now you can see if you're wanting your children looking for books on here, a kid friendly, easier option. Okay, so here our little guide brings up these different options. If they want to look for stuff about people, or stuff about places, nature, things. If they just want to find a fiction book, you click on fiction, and then it brings up these next ones. So a picture book for your little ones, or a chapter book for your older readers, or other, let's see what other is, because I'm not sure I even know. Oh, there we go, look at that. Graphic novel, or even classics. Okay, so I'm gonna click on graphic novel, and there you go. Here is a listing of our graphic novels that they can look through and decide what they want to read. Okay? All right, now I'm going to hit the back button a couple of times. There we are, back to our page. Okay, that is our new system in a nutshell. We hope that you're gonna enjoy it as much as we do. So um, let us know if you have any questions and thank you. We'll see you in the library.